Hi everyone, my name is Karen. This is my channel, Rather Be Reading, and today I'm bringing to you my January book haul. This is going to be a pretty big book haul. In terms of like, you know, how the new year is going to go and how you spend kind of the beginning of the year, like influencing how the rest of your year is going to go, I have something like close to 50 books, if not over 50 books that I need to talk about in this video. And that's just the physical ones that I bought. I also have my library books. I've got ebooks to talk about. My self-control was just not great in January. I went on like three or even four separate like secondhand book shopping trips. So I ended up with a lot of books. But as always, we will start off with the library books that I picked up in the month of January. So I only picked up five books, which is not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. The first one I picked up is Murder in Mesopotamia, I think that's how you say that, by Agatha Christie. This is the 14th book in the Hercule Poirot series, which is the next, oh, there's the library receipt falling out of it, next book in the um, Hercule Poirot series that I need to read. I also picked up Nine Dragons by Michael Connolly. I don't know what number book I'm up to in this series, actually, because it depends what site you kind of look at for the series because some include the kind of Mickey Haller books where Harry Bosch is mentioned, some don't. So I'm not really sure. All I know is that this is the next one that I need to read and that this is definitely a Harry Bosch specific one. Um, and so I'm looking forward to this because I do love me some good Harry Bosch books. The next book that I picked up from the library is Defending Jacob by William Landy. This helps with one of my goals for 2018, which was to read 10 of the first 20 books um, that I marked as to read on Goodreads. So I picked up this one from the library. This is Defending Jacob by William Landy. This follows a man who is a prosecutor, I believe, and there is a brutal murder of a child at his son Jacob's school, um, and there's a lot of pressure on him to like find and prosecute this killer. And I believe then that piece of evidence turns up, which points to his son Jacob actually being um, the murderer of this boy. And then obviously that turns everything completely on its head. It says here, a son accused of murder, a family on trial. So this actually sounds really, really um, interesting. I'm not into the cover picture, but it does sound really interesting and like a really like, it just sounds like a good time thriller. Next from the library, I have The Book of Love by Philippa Fioretti. This is for another one of the goals that I had for myself in 2018, which was to read the first 10 books off my like physically written out to read list that I have. So this one I collected from the library to help meet that challenge. And this is on the front, a seductive mystery that will steal your heart. So what I can gather from this is that this is like more of like your women's fiction chiclet type of story that is like romance based, but it does have a mystery aspect to it. And I have read the back, but it's very like long and involved. So I'm not really that clear on exactly what's happening, but all I know is that it's a chick lit romance with mystery. But that sounds like it could be a lot of fun. And the final book that I picked up from the library in January was Dead End by Emily Rodder. So if you've been watching my channel for a long time, then you'll know that I was rereading this series, which is the Teen Power Inc. slash Raven Hills Mystery series from my childhood and I got I read the first 28 books in the series and then I requested book 29 from my library and I was just on hold for forever and it just never came in and then eventually my the book had been on hold for so long that my hold just expired even though the book never came in and according to the library there were two copies of it and both copies were like in their libraries but I and I just after it eventually expired and it had been so long, I just couldn't be bothered to try to figure out like what was happening with that book. And I did do some research online as to whether I could try because there was another book that I couldn't get from the library earlier on in this series. And I managed to get a really like cheap copy of that one off eBay. But I couldn't find a copy of um, Book 29 anywhere online. So unfortunately, I just decided I was going to have to skip that book and move on to Dead End, which is book 30 and the final book um, in the series. So I'm a little bit upset that I wasn't able to reread every book because that would have been really, really great. But I'm glad to finally be done with this reread because these books are a lot of fun. And I'm not sure if I ever finished the story originally, so it'll be interesting to see if I actually remember anything from this one. Next, let's move on to the ebooks that I purchased in January. Again, I mentioned in my 2018 goals video that I really wanted to include the ebooks that I purchased in my monthly hauls because I never remember to talk about them and I do purchase ebooks. So I actually purchased three this month. I believe that all three of these were free. I rarely spend much money on ebooks. I either pick them up when they're free or when they're like a dollar or two dollars. I rarely spend more than that unless it's a book that I am really interested in. Um, I am subscribed to like a bunch of different emails 
emails that send you out like deals on ebooks. Um, and so the first one that I purchased in the month of January is See Me Not by Janelle Harris. So this is a psychological thriller that has to do with a um, woman and her husband who both have a secret. Um, and then, but there is some third party that they don't know who it is who appears to know both of their secrets. That's all I really know about it. But it's pretty rare on those emails. To be honest with you, a lot of the books that come through on there are... They're like self-published books, which I believe this one is as well, but they're first books in series. And I don't, I'm not interested in purchasing first books in series of like ones that I've never even heard of. So when I see something, especially a thriller, that's actually like a standalone thriller and I'm not going to have to spend money later on down the line to get further books in the series, then I'm usually pretty keen to buy it. And so that is definitely one that I'm very interested in reading eventually because, as you know, I'm kind of trying to work through the backlog on my Kindle, but I do continually purchase new books as well. The next ebook that I purchased was Until the End of the World by Sarah Lyons Fleming. This is one that's an adult post apocalyptic zombie book that's the first book in a series. Now, this one I purchased because I both, Jen from Today in Jen's Library and Lisa from Books and Smiles, have both mentioned and recommended this on their channels. And this is a book that I marked as to read. So, generally, I'll only purchase a book I haven't heard of if it's free. But I do occasionally spend a dollar or two if I see a book that I've been interested in the past that I have marked as to read. This one ended up being free, I'm pretty sure. But it was one that I was interested in. So, even though it's the first book in a series, it is a series that I wanted to read. And hopefully, I can read this one. And then, if I enjoy it, I might be able to get the other books cheap on Kindle, or I may just get the other books from my library. But it's definitely something that I'm interested in reading. And the final ebook that I purchased is Closet Full of Bones by AJ Alto. So this is another random one that I hadn't really heard of, but is from what I can tell a standalone thriller that follows two sisters who both, they're like a, kind, a really like tight knit unit who they have a lot of secrets that they share like only with each other and they've got a lot of kind of dark stuff I believe in their past and they buy a home and they're trying to turn it into an artist retreat. I think when all of this stuff starts coming up, that's got to do, I think, with secrets in their past, like ex-boyfriends and things like that start coming up. It is a thriller. I don't know too much about it apart from that, but pretty much any thriller that sounds even slightly interesting, if it's free and a standalone, I'm going to purchase it. So now let's move on to the huge amount of books that I purchased with my own money in January. So first off, I made a trip to the Savers um, that is near-ish to my house because I always in January, I'm like, oh, but think about all of the books that people may have got for Christmas presents that they may not have wanted or are donating because of New Year's resolutions or whatever, and there might be heaps of great stuff there. So I went to Savers and I purchased one, two, three, four, five, five? books while I was there. So not too many, but I made lots of secondhand bookshops is why there's so many in this haul. So the first thing that I found I was really excited about, and that is this bind up of books by Richard Lehman. The first of them is Endless Night, and that's the main one I was excited about because this is a book that I marked as to read quite recently that I'd heard Peter Likes Books talk about. And it's a thriller that is about a girl who is sleeping over at her friend's house when um, her friend's fa entire family is slaughtered except for the little brother and herself. They managed to escape and I think then she's just like on the run from the killer. He's trying to track her down because she knows, he knows, sorry, that she saw him. So I don't know if it's one killer or a group of killers but they're trying to get this girl and it's all about that. This also has Midnight's Lair in it which I have no idea what that one's actually about but I've heard that just generally Richard Lehman is a pretty like prolific horror writer. So I'm sure that I'll probably enjoy both of these, but Endless Night is the main one that I purchased this like kind of bind up for. I then found a copy of The Graces by Law Eve. I This has got some mixed reviews, but all I know about it is that it's YA and that it involves witches. So even though it's got mixed reviews, I love books about witches. So for only $4, I couldn't really pass it up. Next, I picked up can You Keep a Secret by Carolyn Overington. Now this one I really just picked up because I recognize this author's name because I've picked up another book by her at another secondhand bookshop. And this is a thriller and all I know about it is that it's about two people who meet right around the time of New Year's 1999 and they have a really whirlwind romance and they get married. I don't know what the thrillery aspect is because the back of this is very vague and I also really don't like this cover but all I know is that it's the true definition of a page turner according to this. Sorry about the glare. Um, and yeah, like I've said, my you, this will be a theme. My self-control was just really low this entire month so this is just a random one that I picked up. Next I picked up Foxlow by Eleanor Wasserberg. So this is a book um, that 
I, I saw and I thought I knew what this was about and so I just grabbed it and like added it to my pile because as I've said self control was low but then when I was looking into this I was pretty sure that I don't know that I'd ever actually heard about this but the cover is just really pretty and since I've picked this up I actually um, saw Kath Elizabeth Reads talk about this on her channel and she really loved this she gave it five stars and all I know is that it's about a family who I think are in a cult. And I do love books about cults. So this is right on my alley. And I, it's just giving me a gothic vibe. So I believe Kath gave it five stars. So yeah, I'm, I think that I'm just really going to like this. And finally, on that trip to Savers, I picked up Domina by L.S. Hilton. I literally have no idea what this is about, except that I own the first book, Maestro, which again, I picked up on another secondhand book, and I can't even, sorry, at another secondhand bookshop, and I can't even remember what that one is about. I just know that I own it. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, well, I might as well grab it because I own the first book. So that's why I purchased this one. So next we have some book depository books that arrived um, at my house in January. Well, not at my house, they actually get sent to work. But they arrived at work in January. So at the end of the year, generally for Christmas, when I'm per pl um, placing my normal like monthly book depository order, what I normally do as like a little Christmas present is I sort the list by what's most expensive on each of my three separate like wish lists that I have on book depository. And I purchase like the most expensive book on each of those wish lists because... They're books that are going to take me forever to purchase because generally when I place my normal monthly order, I purchase the cheapest book on those wish lists. So this first book that I have is just part of the normal monthly order that I would have placed just normally. And that is Sweep Temptation by Wendy Higgins. Um, this is the fourth book um, in this series, which I believe is just the first book retold in the male's perspective, which is not my favorite thing ever in series. But I own the first three, so I couldn't just stop myself from having the complete series, so I purchased this one as well. The next two books are ones that were part of like the Christmas present portion of the like haul to myself. The first of those is Whoa Glare, uh, The Merciless 2 by Danielle Vega. Um, this is the second book, the first book is just called The Merciless and I haven't read that book but I'm really really interested in it because it's a YA horror that involves a, um, what's the word I'm looking for, an exorcism? It just sounds really, really interesting, and apparently it's really brutal. And that first book, if you've seen it, I'm sure you have, is like a bright pink, um, like, cloth-bound type of book. And this one isn't, like, cloth-bound. It's more of a shiny, as you can tell by the glare, but it is gold, and it is also one that's just, like, a hardcover with no dust jacket, and it's got the, like, pentagram on the front. I just really love the aesthetic of these books, so I was really glad to have this because I believe there's a third book out now as well that I've got on my wish list, so I just want to read the series, so I'm glad to have the second book. And then the other book that I purchased that was part of the Christmas order is The Roanoke Girls by Amy Engel. This has been on my wish list on Book Depository for ages, but it's really expensive. It's like $23, which is really expensive in my opinion, but it's also really expensive whenever I see it in store. And I actually think, have I even seen this in store? I'm not sure. Um, this is a, I don't even know if this is YA. I think it might be an adult thriller that is about, I, I'm not totally clear on it. I think it's about a girl who goes back to her hometown and there's all like really weird stuff that's going on with her family and it's just really twisted. But the people I've heard talk about this just go on about how like really dark and twisted this really is and that just sounds so interesting to me. I've been wanting to read this for so so long so I'm so excited to have a copy. And then this next book was again just part of my normal order that I would have placed anyway, and that is The Romeo Catchers by Alice Arden. I have read this. This is the sequel to The Casket Girls by Alice Arden. I really love these books. This is a YA paranormal series that involves witches and vampires and is set in New Orleans, so, or New Orleans as they sometimes say, um, but yeah, I really love these covers, and these are, this is a self-published series, and because I enjoyed it so much, um, I read these both from NetGalley, I believe, but because I enjoyed these so much, I did want to support the author and buy my own copies of the series. Next, I have books that I got from Savers, but a different Savers. So there is a Savers that I'd heard about, which is apparently supposed to be really, really big. Like it's, And I was just like, oh, well, if it's really huge, it must have a really big book section. And so one day I convinced my mom to go with me to this Savers so that I could check it out. And it wasn't like overly fantastic but I did pick up a few things there and one of the things that I picked up is the first 10 books in the Goosebump series except minus book six they didn't have book six there um, but I rarely see 
goosebumps around like I, I don't know why but I don't see a lot of them in secondhand bookshops so I do have books one through five and then seven through ten so I guess I'll tell you what they are I've got welcome to the welcome to dead house stay out of the basement monster blood say cheese and die the curse of the mummy's tomb night of the living dummy the girl who cried monster welcome to camp nightmare and book 10 the ghost next door I'm pretty sure that I've read all of these because I read most, if not all, of the Goosebumps series when I was growing up. But I just thought this was a real... I don't think I'll buy the whole series, but I just thought this was a fun thing to own, like, the first ten. So I will now keep my eye out um, for book six. And if I see that in a um, secondhand bookshop, then I'll probably pick that up as well. So I only picked up three other books on that trip to that savers um the first of those is the haunt this sorry this house is haunted by john boyne john boyne i know is the author of the boy in the striped pajamas which i haven't read and i haven't read anything by him but i do know this author and this just sounded like for one it's about a haunted house so that's up my alley and it's a, quite a gothic story from what i can tell so it's historical and it's about a girl who is has taken a position as a governess and when she gets off the train, like, where she's going to take the position, she's pushed by invisible hands onto a platform and is barely saved. And then she arrives at the house where she's going to be the governess and the children are there, but there's no adults anywhere in sight. No parents, no, um, like, servants, no anything. And it just sounds, like, really creepy and gothic. And that is definitely the types of books that I love. Next, I picked up a copy of White Gardenia by Belinda Alexandra. I picked this up because I recently had this on a Marked As To Read video because my real life friend Emma recommended this to me and so when I saw a copy, I just decided to grab it. I don't know too much about this except that it is set in Russia during World War II and I believe it's just like a historical romance. I don't know too much about it apart from that except that my friend Emma really loves it. And finally, on that trip to Savers, I picked up a copy of Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. This is a series that I've been interested in reading for a really long time. Um, and so I just, when I saw this first book for cheap, I thought I might as well grab it. And then I could give it a read and see whether it's worth continuing on with the series. I hear mixed things about this. I know a lot of people have got a lot of problems with it. Then other people, like, totally love it. So I'm interested to see what I think. So next, there is a secondhand bookshop in the city in Adelaide that I've been to a few times, and I happened to see a post from them on Facebook asking if people could hold off on bringing any more donations into the store, because it is a charity shop, um, because they had so much stock that they didn't have like room to take any more donations, and if people could try to visit the store to see if they could make room for new stock. And so I, when I saw that post, I immediately contacted my brother's girlfriend, Shakar, and said, we've got to get there. So we went, and I picked up 19 books. So I'm going to go through all of those books that I picked up. We're not even halfway through this, like, physical haul, just FYI. So the first chunk of books that I picked up is a bunch of these books by Christopher Pike, because I love these, like, YA, like, you know, cheesy slasher-type horror books. I picked up Slumber Party. I'm not showing you these properly. Road to Nowhere, Die Softly, and See You Later. They had some others there by him, but they seemed to be um, parts of um, a series, I think. And so I just grabbed these ones because I had a quick look, and these all appeared to be standalones. I then also found copies of Anna and the French Kiss and Isla and the Happily Ever After. They didn't have a copy of Lola and the Boy Next Door, and these are actually slightly different sizes. I don't know if you can see that this one is actually bigger than this one, but I saw them and they're in pretty good condition and they're in the covers, like nice covers, so I just thought I'll grab them and eventually I could pick up a copy of Lola and then I'll eventually I'll read this series. We all know what this is about, YA contemporary love story. And then I also was excited to find Fire Study by Maria V. Schneider. So I actually own this book, if you recall. But when I purchased it from Book Depository, I got sent the cover that I didn't like, and I had a whole argument with Book Depository about it, and Book Depository ended up refunding my money, but I still had the ugly cover. So when I saw this, I was like, wow, I didn't end up paying for that copy of um, Fire Study. So this was $4, so I figured, wow, I can pay $4 for this and have the matching cover, so I was really excited to find this there. Next, I grabbed Frankie by Siobhan Plozer. This is just one that I've heard about in kind of the Australian booktube circles because this is an Australian YA story that is about a girl who I think has some, like, anger issues and then a boy turns up who, yeah, is claiming to be her half-brother and then this raises a lot of stuff from her past. That's all I really know about it, but I know this was getting some really positive reviews. I also picked up a copy of 
Charlie St. Cloud by Ben Sherwood. This is the movie tie-in edition with old Zac Efron on the front. I have seen this movie and I did enjoy the movie and I've had this book on my like to read list for a really long time so when I saw a copy for cheap I just decided to grab it. Next I picked up two books by Sarah Waters. I picked up The Little Stranger and The Paying Guest. I was excited to see these because I already own a copy of Fingersmith and The Night Watch and the copy of The Night Watch is actually in this exact same really tall paperback editions as these. Um, and I actually have no idea what these are about. I know Sarah Waters writes historical, and I think they're not, like, a kind of mysteries a little bit, I think, but I'm not too sure. But for some reason, Sarah Waters just really, really appeals to me as, like, an author that I really think I'm going to love. And I hope that's the case because I now own four books by her. Next, I found a copy of Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Berendt. This is one that, that, again, I know I marked as to read a long time ago, and all I know is that it, I think it's like a narrative nonfiction that's a true crime story about a shooting in 1981, Savannah, Georgia. That's all I know about it, but as soon as I recognized it, like I said, I knew that I'd marked it as to read and that it was something that I'd wanted to read. Next, I found a copy of Eileen by Otessa Moshfeg. I'm sorry, I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly at all. I don't really know what this is about, except that it's a literary fiction, and I know this was getting a lot of buzz, because was this, yeah, this was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize in 2016, so this obviously around that time was getting a lot of buzz, and a lot of people were really raving about it, so when I saw a copy, I just decided to grab it. Next, I picked up a copy of Truly Madly Guilty by Leanne Moriarty. This is her most recent release. I have read Big Little Lies and What Alice Forgot by Leanne Moriarty and enjoyed both of those and so when I saw a copy of this I just decided to grab it because I really like Leanne Moriarty and I want to read more of her books. I believe this is just another thriller. Yeah, it's at a barbecue and then something happens. I don't know what happens. That may be part of the mystery but yeah, I'm sure this will be a good time. Next I picked up a copy of The Silent Wife by A.S. Harrison. This is an adult thriller that I know, once again, I marked as to read a really long time ago. And all I know about it is that it's about a marriage that is very, like, tumultuous. And I think the husband is, yeah, it says that he's, like, a cheater and she likes to settle scores. So I don't know if this is going to be about, like, an abusive relationship or what, but it's just a thriller that I knew that at some point I'd wanted to read. So when I see it for cheap, I grab it. Next, I picked up a copy of How to Love by Katie Cattugno. This is actually an ARC copy, which I've never, like, seen anyone with an ARC. That's because this book was published, like, ages ago in, like, 2013 or something like that. Does this have a date in it for when it was going to be published? Let me just have a look. Yeah, in 2013. So, I know you're not supposed to sell ARCs, but it was a charity shop, so whatever. Um, this is a YA contemporary that I've actually been interested in for a really long time. It's about a girl who... Um, is in love with this guy and then she ends up getting pregnant I think and he doesn't know that she's pregnant and then he disappears and then it's like three years later while she's now got a child and he returns and discovers her with this child and then it's just kind of about what happens after that. I hear mainly positive things about this and for some reason I've just always been really intrigued about it so hopefully it's a good time. Next I found another what I believe is a YA contemporary called Whisper to Me by Nick Lake. I've never heard anything about this before but I, I saw the spine and it looked really pretty and so I grabbed it off the shelf and when I read this synopsis I was immediately intrigued. So I'm just going to read that to you really quickly. It says, here are some things I need to say to you. One, I hear voices. Well just the one voice really. Two, I miss you. Three, I wish I could take back what I did to you. Four, forgive me. I should have left Oakwood the day that I made that terrible discovery on the beach, the day the voice in my head first said those awful things to me, but everything spun out of control, but then, sorry, before everything spun out of control, but then I wouldn't have met you. So I, this was just a really intriguing synopsis, and I really like this cover, and so I just grabbed it. Next, I grabbed a copy of Today Will Be Different by Maria Semple. Again, I don't know what this is about. All I know is that this is by the same author as Where Did You Where'd You Go, Bernadette, which is a book that um, Shakara actually really liked. And I believe that she's read this and really liked this as well. And so I bought it. So those were all of the books that I bought from that particular secondhand bookshop. And then on the way home from there, we had to go past this really big um, Salvo store that we've been to a few times, and it's a really big one. And so... Of course, we stopped in there, and I ended up picking up four books there. But it was actually really exciting, because when I went to pay for them, it turned out that I had heaps of points on my, um, like, 
customer card um, for Salvos, and I ended up getting all of these books actually for free. I didn't actually pay for these, so that was amazing. So I found a copy of Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler, and I've heard a little bit about this, and I believe it's just about a couple that is broken up, and it follows all of the objects, I think that like the girl or the boy is returning to the other one and it tells like the story of their relationship and why they broke up. Um, yeah, it just sounded really interesting when I saw a copy, I decided to grab it. I then picked up a copy of White Bodies by Jane Robbins. I was really excited to see this because this is a very recent release. This is an adult thriller that has to do with twins, which twins is a buzzword of mine. And this has to do with one, I think the twins are like have a, weird like kind of relationship one's always been jealous of the other I think and then one of them is married and the one who's jealous doesn't like the twins husband and then something happens there's like some big event I don't know if he dies or something I have no idea but and I've actually had quite mixed reviews of this but it's an adult thriller that I'd marked as to read a while ago and it's quite a recent release so I was just excited to find it Next, I grabbed a book called Little Bird of Heaven by Joyce Carol Oates. I'd never seen this before, but I just picked it up and it sounded really interesting. It's about a girl whose father is arrested for killing a classmate of hers mother. But then there turns out to be another suspect, which is actually that same classmate's father, so the woman's husband. And so she believes that the classmate's father did it and the classmate believes that her father did it. And that's kind of what it's about. It just sounded really interesting. Next, I picked up a copy of Without You by Saskia Sargenson. Again, this is really beautiful, but this is actually an ARC copy. So that was, you know, I've never, I rarely see ARCs and I managed to get two on the same day. This is again a thriller novel. And again, I'd mark this one as to read at some point. And I recognized the book when I, like the title when I saw it there. And this is about a girl who goes missing. And then I think it's years later. I don't know how much longer later. Well, maybe it's not any... Anyway, a girl is swimming, I think, and she goes missing, and then her sister is obsessed with trying to find her. And then it says, what nobody knows is that inside one of the concrete huts, Eva is being held captive, that she is fighting to survive and return home. So, it just sounds really interesting. Like I said, it was a book that I knew that I'd wanted to read at some point in the bar, so I grabbed it. Next, I actually have another Leanne Moriarty book, The Last Anniversary. This is a book that actually um, Shakara gave to me. She had purchased a second copy of it because this one didn't match her other Leanne Moriarty books. And I don't actually know what this one is about, but I do eventually want to read all of Leanne Moriarty's books, so I was happy to take this off Shakara's hands. So next, we actually have the final book that I purchased for myself um, for Christmas. For some unknown reason, one of the books... Well, it's not Book Depository's fault, but one of the books went completely missing... Um, when it was being shipped and I ended up having to contact Book Depository because all of the other books had arrived and it had been a while and this one hadn't come and then they ended up sending another copy and I did eventually get it and that is the illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling illustrated by Jim Kay. Oh I'm so excited to have this. I've actually haven't looked through this yet um, and I will be doing that sometime this month probably because I'm just really excited. I don't think I'll read it because I just did reread um, the series last year but I am going to like just flick through the entire book and just admire all of the illustrations but and I'm just really excited to have this this is so heavy I can't imagine how big the later books in the series or if they're going to do them in like separate volumes or something because like I say after this book when it gets to Goblet of Fire the books get massive so I don't know how they're going to do it but I'm, I can't wait for them because these are beautiful Next, I have Daughter of Deep Silence by Carrie Ryan. I actually won this in a giveaway um, from Mel over at That Girl Bookworm. Mel was doing a giveaway where I think it was, she'd done a video where she recommended 10 books that were books that she loved, like from before Booktube or that she'd loved from like a really long time ago. And then she was doing a giveaway where you could pick one of those 10 books to win. And I ended up winning the giveaway. And this is the one that I chose. And I'd never seen this cover before. And I actually think it's really pretty. So this is a, I think this is YA, but it's some kind of mystery thriller where a ship has sunk and then there's only a few survivors and the other survivors of this accident are lying about what happened. And then I think it's about the main character trying to get revenge on those people. I don't really know too much about it apart from that, but I really do enjoy revenge stories and I've heard um, positive things about this. And so I'm just really excited to have a copy of it. 
Next, I have two books just from my normal, my next normal book depository monthly order. I do normally get three. The third one, for some reason, was just delayed in shipping, so that didn't come till February. So I'll have that book in my February book haul. Um, but the first one that arrived was The Evolution of Mara Dyer. This is the second book in the trilogy. I do own the first book. This is a YA... Yeah, it's YA trilogy. I don't really know what genre it falls into but I have been interested in this for a long time um, and so I'm glad to have the second book now and I will eventually get the third book and then have the whole trilogy. I then also purchased Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now I've never read anything by Taylor Jenkins Reid but she's an author again similar to Sarah Waters that I just really feel that I'm going to love and I want to purchase and read all of her books and so I just went like looked at her all of her books that she's published and went back and decided to purchase them basically in publication order. So I believe this is her first novel. I don't know what this is about. Uh, it looks like a girl's boyfriend is maybe killed. And then I'm sure it's about her dealing with that. Because I think she writes kind of... They're like literary women's fiction more. But like that deal with really emotional issues. Uh, not your average love story. That's what it says on the front. I don't know what it's about. But again, I just really want to read all of Taylor Jenkins Reid's books. Next, I went to a secondhand bookshop that's near, um, near-ish. It's not super close to my house, but it's the only one that I found anywhere in my area that will actually take books that you give in and, like, give you credit to spend in the store. So I took some books that I had, that I've had in my house for a really long time. I finally took some more of them there. I did get some credit, so I ended up getting all of these books that I'm about to show you for $5, I believe it was. So the first book that I picked up was The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter. Again, I was really excited to see this there because this is a very recent release. It's Karen Slaughter's most recent thriller, like standalone thriller um, publication. And I don't know too much about what it's about. I think it's got to do with, yeah, two sisters. And there's one day I think their mother is murdered. And then it's like years and years later. But I don't know what happens years and years later. I just know that it's Karen Slaughter and that it's a thriller and that it's been getting a lot of buzz and I wanted to read it. And so when I saw it, I bought it. And then finally, all of the rest of the books that I picked up from that secondhand bookshop were again more of these like YA, like slasher horror type books. So I picked up Trick or Treat by Richie Tankersley Cusick. This is one that I'm sure that I read as a teenager because this cover and like the titles looks very familiar to me. I also picked up the Window by Carol Ellis. I picked up The Snow by Carolyn B. Cooney. I picked up The Phantom by Barbara Steiner. I picked up Pool Party by Linda Cargill. And The Invitation by Diane Ho. And this one says RSVP or die. I, th I just really enjoy those kind of really cheesy YA slasher type books. And I really don't see them very often. Um, I never see them in like Salvos or Savers stores. I only ever see them, it seems, in like more dedicated secondhand bookshops. So whenever I see them, I try to purchase some because I do just really, really love these type of books. So finally, on the way back from that trip to that secondhand bookshop, again, I stopped in at a Salvos on that I had to go past on the way Back to my, actually I stopped at two that were all both on the way back from that second band bookshop because I've got little to no self-control. At the first one I only purchased one book though and that was On the Island by Tracy Garvis Graves. I was excited to see this because I purchased another book which I can't remember what it is but I'll put a picture of it on the screen that I thought was this book like a while ago and then I realized oh that I purchased the wrong book and so this is the one that I had meant to buy back then. This is about a woman and I... Yeah, a guy who's 17 and a woman who's, I think, his tutor, and she's 30, and they're flying over to join his family, like, for for a holiday when their plane crashes, and then I believe there's some kind of romance forms between the two of them, and I've just heard this, that premise sounds really interesting to me, it's like, playing with, like, a kind of interesting topic, but, like, in an interesting way. Um, so yeah, I was excited when I saw this because I originally thought I'd purchased this a long time ago. And then I found, at the second Salvos, I found a copy of The Hypnotist Love Story by Leanne Moriarty. So I believe that I, there's only one other Leanne Moriarty book. I don't own a copy of What Alice Forgot, but I have read that. And then I think there's only one other book of hers that I haven't read that I don't own. So I'm glad to have a lot of Leanne Moriarty on my TBR pile to get to because like I said, she's just an author that I really do want to read all of her books. And then finally I picked up this box set of the first three books in the Uglies series by Scott Westerfeld. So it's got Uglies, Pretties and Specials. 
This is a series that I actually feel like a lot of people are unhauling these days that they read when they were younger and now they don't think that they'd like it as much and so they get rid of it. I never read this though, so I'm interested to read it um, now as an adult and kind of see what my thoughts on it are. I believe this is a YA dystopian series that follows a world where when you turn 18 or something, you can get plastic surgery to make yourself beautiful, I think. I don't really know anything about it apart from that. And I know that there's another book, I think it's called Extras, that came after this. And I feel like I've seen that book in a lot of secondhand bookshops. So if I do see that, I'll grab that as well so that I have the like complete series. But this was $8, so for all three of these books, I just figured I'd grab it. So those were all of the books that I picked up in the month of January. I know this video was really, really long, so I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for sticking around if you made it through this whole video. I would love to chat with you guys in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, if you have thoughts, or what your self-control was like in January. I would love to know if you had as much issues with self-control as I did, so I'd love to chat down below. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. That's all I've got for this video today. Bye, guys.